I remember being told by my coach in high school to not think about my mistakes during a game. Because during a game, if you think about your mistakes, you'll probably make even more. And what you're about to see is how overthinking one mistake will lead to another, and another, and another. And nearly cost us a $3,000 paycheck. Get away! The day before I had gone out with Captain Cam Feria and Johnny Rigo to catch tuna. It was a very eventful day because someone had actually ran over our line with the tuna still on it. I'd recommend watching that video before this one. You don't have to, but the context from that day will help you understand a lot of things in this video. There were two main differences in this trip. The first was, it was just me and Cam. We did not have a third person. And the second difference, which we didn't know at the time, was that this tuna was going to be significantly bigger. I remember the first thing I had to do, I had to actually fix the reel from the day before. When we drove at that guy, we got so much slack on the reel. It wasn't packed down nice and tight. So tuna will mess that up quick. You know, they take a run with 40 pounds of drag. They'll bite right into the line, so. We were down a man, and I had no idea what that would look like. It was just me and Cam. You know, like the previous day, all of these things need to happen. And the three of us, it was overwhelming. So now day two, there was just two of us. So I'm thinking to myself, like, do we have enough people to do this? Early on, I think there was a couple bites, like right, right, real quick. And uh, we weren't one of those boats. We stayed out there for a while, grind out our boat. Oh. We saw some birds up top, birds working on some bait. We weren't marking too many fish, um, but I think that's typical for when the, the fish are up top like that, um, you don't always mark them. You know, the previous day, that first fish, we had like 15 squid in its belly. You know, there's just like this clip of Cam just like pulling squid after squid out of that tuna's belly. And you know, less than 24 hours later, we're in the exact same spot. You know, there's still tuna in the area. We're still marking fish. So, you know, why not use squid? The problem is there was so much mackerel, you know, you couldn't drop without um, getting the barbs on your squid jig bent out. Bro, they bent these barbs so bad that one of them, one of them snapped off. don't care they'll hit the squid jigs and uh it was it was becoming a problem with the mackerel and the squid jigs and not being able to keep the mackerel away so just fish with the mackerel fish with what you got you know if the mackerel are there they're eating mackerel so. We eventually gave up with the squid and ended up just fishing the mackerel. And Cam did something that he usually doesn't do. I saw some fish up top working the piece and this is something I've never done. I was like, Mike, let's try something different. Took a mack out of the live well, hooked him straight through the nostrils, which isn't where I usually hook them. Throw him out about a couple hundred feet behind the boat and then pulled that mack straight through the pot of fish we had breaking. I just hear Cam say, we're on. And I look up and I see that that rod tip just dancing a little bit. Almost immediately, as soon as we got into that uh, that pot of fish, it was. We're on. That drag up? His first initial run or runs, you know, he may have taken a couple second break, but he, he dumped us for a good couple of minutes at the start. He took a run and took a couple second break and then took another run and took a couple second break and then Took another run and we, we almost actually ran out of line. Good, 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 good. Right side. Keep that rod bent. I, I know it's bent right now, but we're saying it's starting to go slack. You know, 
I hop on that reel. And all I remember in the back of my mind is from the day before how Johnny, you know, did such a good job keeping that rod bent. And in my mind, I was like, all right, Johnny's not here. So, you know, I got to make up for that. So I was not paying attention. I was just focusing on like, yeah, keep that rod bent, you know, crank them. And the next thing I know, you know, Cam pops his head over and looks at the reel. Watch out, watch out. Watch out. First, I didn't even realize what happened. I didn't put two and two together until he started screaming at me to reel with like every ounce of my soul. Yeah, Mike was on the rod. I think I was coming back just to adjust the drag a little bit. And then I came back and I just, I was like, oh, fucked it back to the, uh, back to the console. And that's when I realized like we almost got spooled and it was because I wasn't paying attention to how much line we had in the reel. You can see the gold on the spool. Uh, you know, I was so fixated on keeping that rod bent. I just had absolutely zero awareness about anything else that was going on at the time. That spool had 10 yards of line on it. I started cranking that thing like my life depended on it. You know, I didn't want to be that idiot that, you know, that lost a fish because I wasn't communicating with how much line we had. So I was just, you know, giving it, giving it the gas. Yeah. Chase them for about 10 minutes, I would say. Constantly gaining line on it for 10 minutes. Finally got to a point where we were comfortable to move the rod. Slow down, let them work us a little bit, start playing the dance. To where the bow? I fight the fish with everything I got, you know, my arm starts to ache a little bit. Um, and at some point, Cam decides to move the rod to the bow. Kind of requires a little bit of finessing. God forbid, you know, you accidentally slip and then lose the expenses of the ocean. Okay. Okay, once they are done with their runs, you kind of get to uh, an up and down battle, we call it. You know, fighting that fish straight up and down. He's dogging you, you're trying to dog him. It becomes a uh, battle of wills at that point. Once you get that fish up and down, they do what's called a pinwheel or a death circle. They call it a couple different things, but they rotate, you know, either clockwise or counterclockwise on their side. And uh, that's what it becomes a game of adventures. So the size of the pinwheels he was taking, um, he was coming all the way out, and he was coming so far back, you know, we couldn't just keep the boat in reverse. We were having to go in forward and swing around him because his he was coming back so far on his pinwheel set. It was uh, becoming an issue. I think, at, I think at some point I call out to Cam. I'm like, you know, like, let me know, you know, when you can tap in or just like, you know, I was just trying to communicate. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that this fish wasn't lost because of bad communication. So I was being like super clear. Um, especially after that situation with almost losing losing all of our line and I run behind the wheel. I, my experience driving center consoles is, again, not very extensive. So I was like crystal clear with Cam, like, tell me exactly what orientation you want the boat, like how much gas. Because again, I didn't want the mistake that I made out of inexperience to be the reason that we lost the fish with just two of us. Yeah, we're just keeping it in the head of the bow. And if you come at the 
Got it. Halfway through, I realized like right next to me, there's a milk crate and there's the harpoon line and it's completely tangled up. Like it's not even remotely usable. As Kim's fighting this fish, I'm like thinking to myself, like at some point this fish is gonna get within the harpooning range and Cam's gonna ask for the harpoon and it's gonna be a tangled mess. So the harpoon line being tangled was like a major fixation point for me. I was like, who knows, this fish might be done fighting in like 10 minutes and this harpoon's gonna be tangled. I spent the next like 20 minutes just like my head down trying to untangle that dart line. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a stressful fight, not as stressful as the day before, but you know, very rarely is there a calm to the fight. So it was an experience, everyone is, everyone's human. Oh god! Hi Mike! Hard! Hard right? No! Oh. Hard right? Nothing, nothing, There were multiple times in which that that fish almost broke off. The line was touching the boat, and I saw Cam have to go over the edge of the boat and like with his hand physically block the line from touching the boat. After nearly two hours of total time fighting the fish, we finally got our first look at him. But there was about to be a major problem. I think if I recall, it was at our like, maybe our like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, he came up on his side. Every time you get your first glimpse at that fish, it's, it's, it's a rush of adrenaline, you know? It is what we think he is, it's a good one. You know, we're gonna get to stick him. And uh, you know, it just raises the stakes that much more. At this point, we're pretty much at the finish line and three things still need to happen before this fish can be considered caught. First, the harpoon goes in. Second, the tail of the fish is gaffed. And third, a rope is wrapped around the fish's tail to take away its ability to swim away. I was there, he was kind of up on the surface and I was like, I thought I was gonna be able to stick him with it, you know, just, just stick him with it. And he, he looped. He was probably, he was probably 10 feet down if I had to guess, he, he was pretty deep. And uh, I, just had a, I just had a good shot on him and 
you know, you don't pass up shot opportunities when you get them like that. And I hucked it. We have a pretty good shot of me tossing the stick. Our, my buddy uh, Riley over at Dying Breed Sport Fishing, he, uh, he helped me out, got a good shot of that. And uh, I drilled them. I drilled them pretty deep. Where is it? I always keep the tail rope right behind me, right there. That way when we gaff the fish, it's right there. Um, at the time, this wasn't common knowledge and Mike was searching for that, for that tail rope and I was just getting the piss beat out of me. So I immediately jump up when Cam screams out for it and I start checking the boat and I can't find it. And I yell out to Cam, I'm like, where is it? And he's like, it's probably in one of the compartments in the stern. So I start looking through all the compartments and I can't find it. And I, this whole time as I'm looking looking for this, this tail wrap, I just hear Cam just like moaning, just like yelling. <laughs> like he's getting absolutely throttled at the bow. Where is it? Where is it? Come to find out, boat still in gear. We are going forward. We're dragging him head first, getting water flushing through those gills as we got a gaff in his tail, and he beats the f out of us. In my mind, I'm like, dear God, I need to find this tail wrap because if I don't find it in, in time, he's gonna lose the fish, and he's just like getting absolutely beaten up by this fish. I was just getting the piss beat out of me while he's looking for that rope, and I'm, I'm screaming for help. I'm like, Mike, he's beating me. It's a strong beast. It's it's you know, stronger than a man, stronger than multiple men. Um, I mean, it is literally like getting beat. What I do end up finding is, you know, just some ratty, ratty rope that was for, you know, the bumpers for the boat. And I bring those up to the bow because it's the only thing I could find. And there I see it. The tail wrap is just beautifully on top of the cooler, right behind camp. I'm going in. Like, I wasn't scared for my life. I was scared I was gonna lose the gaff. I'm not letting that calf go overboard. I was going in with that calf. Right here. Help! What, what, what do you need? I need you to drop this calf! Ah! I go over to Cam and I'm like, what do you need? Because at this point I realized like, I have done so much wrong up until this point. I don't want to do anything unless I'm instructed to do it. So I'm like, what do you need? And Cam at that point screams like, I need you to grab this gaff. And as he's screaming that, the fish like pulls him overboard. You see his legs like, like spread out because they're the only things that are keeping him from being pulled overboard. So he like he screams, I need you to grab this gaff. As he's being pulled, his legs spread. And I'm like in my mind thinking I need to grab his legs to make sure he doesn't go overboard. But thank God, thank God he doesn't. I need you to grab this gaff. Ah, ah. I'm right here. Oh, you got it! Riley's coming over. Riley's coming to help because now at this point, I've been getting the shit kicked out of me by this fish for like two minutes straight and he was just witnessing the whole thing. And he's like, oh my God, this kid's getting throttled. So I go over and grab the gaff, and that's when I finally get a piece of what Cam had been dealing with for the past like 90 seconds. This fish absolutely just like unloads on me. It's just like this big tail, you know, with this with this hockey stick gaff, just like slamming the water, starts slamming you. That was when the fish comes off the gaff. And, you know, thankfully we still have, we still have the harpoon and thankfully we still have the fish hooked. I give the gaff to Cam. He gets a second shot at it. Gaffs the tail once more. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Trying. Mike's trying to get the tail rope and he just can't figure out how to set up the tail rope. You just you just pull the line through the loop and put the loop over the tail and cinch that thing up. And uh, 
Yeah, that was difficult for him at the time. Tail wrap. Okay, my right, my right, my right. This right? Yeah. <laughs> and that was when I realized I don't know how to do a tail wrap. No, we don't. We don't got it. My, this one second my, one's got to go over, right? Yep. I had kind of did it the day before. Like, I got it ready, and I put it over the tail, but, like, looking back over the footage, I, Cam was the one who ultimately set it and did the loop. So I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, putting over this tail wrap, trying to imagine what happened the day before, and I'm, like, doing it wrong. And there's basically this series of, like, fumbling, and then I failed the first attempt, and I failed the second attempt. You know, after like the second or third time trying and failing, I'm like, oh, Mike, Mike, just take the gaff. Uh, 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 hold the gaff. Got the gaff. Okay. That's wrapped around my leg. It's wrapped around my leg. As Cam grabs the, the rope from my hands, I feel that there's, it, it's wrapped around my leg. If Cam put that, that tail wrap on the fish and it takes off, I'm either going in or my leg is going in without me. They grow back, the legs grow back. So. Got him right here. Riley pops the boat right at the last second. Right as I'm putting that tail wrap on the fish, we cinch him off, we get him tied off and that's all she wrote. Thanks for it, guys. Holy I saw you battling forever. I was like, I'm gonna stay here in case you after the fish's tail was tied off, we had to put a second line in the head of the fish and then bleed it out. Charlie Brown right in the corner. Try and come on this side of the line. You can see the line? Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Did I get it? <sighs> What side of the line are you in? Can't tell. You can tell now? Yeah, you're over the line. Try and come under it if you can. You don't have to, though. But it'd be really good if you can. I see what you're saying. Hold on. Why don't you do this? Yep, that's good. No. Put that through that loop. And pull it all the way through? Yep. Okay, now, you keep that line up. I'm going to let this line down. At this point, the fish still needed to be brought into the boat, so Cam recruited one of his buddies, Joe, to come over and help us. The previous day, Cam had also sliced open the top of his finger, so he actually needed Joe to help him also clean the tuna. I pull, in, I pull up to this like bird feed, and I put out a rod, and I was just like, I was just in gear. And I, in, I went right into the feed, kind of, swung my Mac into it, so I didn't drive through it, because I swung my Mac into it. I put my boat in neutral, and we just drifted that Mac, no balloon, no nothing. Dumb. We were so low. That thing is, that's an 80 200 pound dagger on it. It got so low, I could see the gold spool no. underneath. When I saw that, I just gunned it. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I knew something crazy because uh -huh. everyone's like, oh.
Where are these guys hooking them now? Right back in there? Where are they? Yeah. I think before you fucking right now, because I sliced my finger handle. Remember I was on the phone oh, with yeah. you and I was like, dude, I just fucking... I can show you how to do it. I did it on the stick boat. It's a dirty fish. I did. Really? Yeah, all Did you get good at it? Yeah. Oh, I need a fucking soft, my soft American. Finger hurts, Mikey. out of the way? Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna try and put him down over here, that way he doesn't land on the soft. This right part of my neck is soft. Yep. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Oh, he's big. One of four. Yeah, it's a big fish. Yeah, he's big. Four, one, he's trying to pull his head up a little. Like it. Woo! Oh, nice guy. Beauty. Uh, I don't know, if he fits in this, he's not that big. Take another one. Yeah. He's round, I can tell you that. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Like, uh, 98? Oh, oh that's wow. good. <laughs> that's not bad. Look at that thing, huh? That's a beaut. So. It was now time to gut the fish, but Joe needed more tools. Specifically, he needed a saw, but Cam had lent his saw to Eric yesterday after he had caught a tuna and forgot his own saw. So we had to find Eric and get the saw back. And Eric was not happy because he had lost a fish of his own. I thought the premiere doesn't crotch break. I said I thought the premiere doesn't crotch break. Premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Knife. 
turn the belt, the, 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 What is it that runs down the white strips that run down? Is that like sperm sacs? I've always thought it was sperm sacs, but I no, that's it's uh Eventually Joe's ride arrives, so we thank him for his help and say goodbye. the inside of the tuna because the ride back was about an hour plus and tuna meat can turn quick on hot summer days.
got him stuffed to the f Now that the tuna was iced, we ran back to shore, which is about an hour to the boat launch, and then the place to sell the fish was not far from the boat launch. I left my permit at home. I was just digging around my email. I got in my email. Okay, as long as you do that, we will get Yeah. And that's what happens when you catch a 500 pound tuna and try to sell it commercially. Be sure to drop a like and leave a comment on what types of videos you guys want to see next. Walk me through the hockey stick gaff. Like how it came about? Yeah. I had that stick. That was a custom Bauer 1X Lite American flag um, pro stock. And I shot that stick for not, not too long. You know, you, you kind of go through a couple sticks a season at the high school level. And, uh, but when that stick broke, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. It had my name on it, had the American flag on it. I stuck a gaff head on that thing. And that thing's probably three or four years old now. I broke that thing like sophomore year of high school, I think. So it's, it has some battle scars on it now. Does the length of the gaff concern you? Yes. <laughs>